What is up, everybody? Welcome to the Elite Athlete Project Podcast. I'm your co-host, Albert Squires. And I'm the other guy, Nick Lydon. Nicky Lydon. And today we're going to be talking about... We're getting deep into some areas so you can stop wasting your time at the gym and actually learn what sets, reps, and intensities you should be using given your specific goal at the gym for specifically athletes today. And this is a major component to becoming a better athlete because the reality is as a football player, whatever sport you do play, you have a limited amount of time to make it to the next level, whether it's college or whether it's a professional athlete, you only have so much time to improve your craft, improve your skill set. So your decisions and how you approach your training are vital and super important to the results you receive through your training. And for all of you, just quick side stat, did you know that 90% of the players in the Super Bowl... 90%. 9-0 were multi-sport athletes, two to three sports during high school. So it's important to do different types of things and not hyper-focus on just one when you're young because you're going to gain benefits from all these different types of things. And what we're going to do today is we're going to bring clarity into the type of training you need to be doing, or at least whenever you are performing certain things, what your intention should be, Mm -hmm. because if it's not there, you're not going to receive the results you're wishing to see from that type of training. Intention is everything. And I mean, I think that segues perfectly to what we're going to go into. We're... We're going to really talk about, there's there's really four different types of training goals you should have while in the gym. Now, I'm not, these don't include conditioning and they do not include fat loss. Fat loss is not a goal in the gym. Fat loss is a goal in the kitchen. That's simply what it is. 100%. Right? If you're trying to lose weight, lose fat, it needs to be done and handled in the gym. Your training yeah. it doesn't really matter. But Because if you're an athlete and you're training like you should be, the work will do be enough for itself. As long as you eat correctly, you'll see the numbers you want to see on the scale. Exactly. So the four real different types of training goals that we have are strength, power, hypertrophy, aka muscle growth, and muscular endurance. So the biggest questions and most confusion, I think, really what happens is around the strength and power. Yes. So it's not even questions. They just don't know. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm strong. That means I'm powerful. That's no, that's not quite how it is. Even a lot of people that program on this stuff, they don't know what they're doing and it's evident in their programming. Yeah. They just follow simple. Oh, well the sets and the reps say this. So therefore I'm getting more powerful. Ooh, <laughs> this was oh, a power oh, workout. Oh, five sets of five? I'm getting stronger. Oh, yes. The five <laughs> sets of five workout. Oh, my gosh. But what we're getting at is the intention and the intensity and the focus behind these two different things. So when we're talking about strength, this is simply the maximal amount of force that you can apply or a.k.a. the in the in, AKA a gym right? The max amount of weight that you can move. It doesn't matter in how long or how quickly you got that weight moved, right? So the strongest athlete in this, in the example I'm going to show you. So if two athletes were going up heads to each other and one athlete squatted 500 pounds in three seconds, and then another athlete squatted 525 pounds and it took them a minute to complete the set, the stronger athlete would be the guy who was exactly versus the more powerful athlete would be the guy who lifted the 500 pounds in that three seconds because they are moving that weight a lot faster and time is a big component to being a powerful athlete. And if you're trying to be good actually on the field, you need to be a powerful explosive athlete. So how quickly you can apply that force, AKA strength into the ground or whatever it may be, the opponent, whatever you're doing. Right. Yeah, that, that's what makes a powerful athlete. Now, now one thing to not get confused with the strength and power. You need both as an athlete, um, especially as a high school athlete. Your strength is not where it, it, it sh- it's going to be as long as you're training correctly. So you, you're going to receive benefits by improving that strength. But understand there's different times in training to focus on your absolute strength. And then there's another time to focus on your absolute 
power, how fast you're moving the weight. And like Nick said, the component that's different there is not necessarily the load. While the load will be different, the component is the velocity. So the rate at which you're moving that weight, okay? So when you're doing strength, absolute strength, it's just the amount of number. Where when it comes into power, if you're not moving that weight at a certain rate, it doesn't matter how much weight you're lifting because you're not going to receive the benefits anymore. And that, yeah. yeah, no, that that's the biggest thing that I think. Uh, I mean, I have to help train a lot of the athletes that I work with in person. And a lot of the questions that I get is that they always are like every athlete wants to get stronger, more powerful. Yes. Right. But it's understanding what's going on inside the body and how you're actually approaching those exercises versus what everyone understands and feels which is like that burn the heart rate going right right that is those feelings of just like oh my muscles got really tired and, and burned a lot that doesn't necessarily make you more powerful no power in in absolute strength primary drivers are from your central nervous system so how quickly you can send the signals and recruit all of the muscle fibers in a succinct matter to generate force right so this is called the cns as you will hear sometimes online when people talk about this mm -hmm. um this the cns requires max amount of atp so that's our energy source our body creates um this cannot recuperate if you're not resting correctly and this is one of the biggest issues like when nick talks about that muscle burn that lactic acid buildup now we're gonna we're gonna go get into this when we go into hypertrophy and muscle endurance but that lactic acid buildup if you're feeling that from a hyper, or I'm sorry, from a strength or power standpoint, you're not resting enough. Lactic acid kicks into the body when your body does not have enough oxygen or ATP left. So lactic acid kicks, kicks in to provide your body some energy and power to keep going. Okay. Now from a power and strength standpoint, yes, your heart rate might climb for the single instance, but if you're feeling an extreme burn or if you're feeling an, uh, uh, an extreme exhaustion as from a cardiovascular standpoint, you're most likely training too hard if you're not able to recover and do the same thing again uh, the next set and rep. Yeah, the hards are different. Yes. So the hard for the hypertrophy, muscular endurance, the bodybuilding, crossfit world, that, that's the, oh, shit, my muscles are on fire. Fire. Like, I can't, can't do anything. The hard is much different where you may not feel like so sore or anything. The hard is getting so intensely focused and trying to give your absolute maximum effort on that lift. So right. power, whether it be a, a clean or even a med ball throw. I see so many athletes like, oh, I do med ball throws, five, six, five, five on into the wall. You have to be trying to put that med ball absolutely in through the wall. Through the wall. Yeah to get your power to increase. You cannot train power to get better or increase at sub-maximal loads. You have to be doing maximal effort to, it's like an engine or a, or a gas tank. You have to fully deplete that engine or like, sorry, that gas tank in order to make it bigger, right? It just has to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Right. Versus cruising, cruise control at 80% the entire time. Right. So when we're talking about a CNS, uh, our central nervous system, it responds to that max effort, um, you know, max ATP. So let's give them some, some info around what your sets, reps, and rest should look like if you're doing and performing strength or power movements. Right. So typically for strength, you're looking between three to five sets. Now, within those sets, you are so power typically is a little bit lower strength is typically a little bit higher right but i want you guys to understand that these will overlap a little bit like if you're training for strength you are you are gonna have some overlap into being more powerful because to be more powerful you, you need to be strong. more strength yes yeah. exactly that's why a lot of strength training is implemented as the primary foundation because it will help with everything along along the way right but when it comes to the intensity and intention, strength, you're, you're, you're trying to push, uh, you know, uh, strength, you're pushing a higher percent of what is called your one rep max for a given amount of reps. Power, on the other hand, you're lowering that intensity, of that weight down to say 60, 70, sometimes even in the 40 to 50% range, mm -hmm. depending upon how many reps you're doing, but you're going absolutely bonkers trying to go so 
fast that you, that you were just moving through the roof. Yes. Right. So basically, anywhere from like one to six reps, you can perform both of these. But um, from a rep standpoint, now the sets, while they're three to five, it really depends. That's where it changes as far as strength and power. Where strength, I'm focusing on how much weight I'm lifting. So if I'm not with lifting the same weight as fast as I was the first set, that's okay because it's about the load, right? So now if I'm performing something that's supposed to increase my power, so I'm in my off season, I'm about two to three months out from regular season. Trying I, to peak out. I'm trying to peak, right? Okay, we're, we're focused on power now. So if I have three sets of, or five sets of three, I need to be as well pre- rested as possible so I can go max effort, max velocity on those three to increase my power. If my, my, my speed starts slowing down during those power sets, cut it. cut it. Because it's not serving the purpose anymore. Yes, I'm improving strength, but there is two different types of type two uh, muscle fibers. There's one that works as a slower acting. That's where your strength comes in. Then there's that explosive. Yeah, it's, it's, it's rapid fire. It's rapid fire. That's what's going to translate into your power, your speed, your agility. And that's what we're looking for when you're two to three months out of your training or your season, I'm sorry. Um, so understanding the difference between both of those. Now strength, a great time to do strength is right after season. Give yourself a few weeks to recover from the season, get back into optimal shape, maybe increase your workload, and then go in and start improving the max amount of weight you can lift. Because when you go back to training power now, so say my one rep max is at so much, now I'm gonna go at 60, 50% of that, and I'm gonna focus on the uh, amount of speed that I'm moving that weight, now that's gonna translate over. Yeah, so if previous season, say your max squat was 300 pounds, right. right? And then you were able to do all your power stuff, great, awesome. Next season, you work on your strength and all of a sudden now you're able to lift 350 pounds as say your max. Now you're 60% that you're moving at that same speed, uh, you're gonna have more power, you're gonna be a more powerful athlete. Yep. There are other components to power <clears throat> like muscle coordination and transfer of force, but that is, a entirely separate yeah we're, we're, we're giving you to the nitty-gritty the very minimal so that you understand when you're training now where to put those efforts and where do your intention is yeah you're just lollygagging through no med ball throws <laughs> now when it comes to rest it's you know the standard book edition is you know anywhere from like two to three to five minutes really it all all what matters for me as a coach is when you're ready to absolutely give the max amount of effort. Like this isn't right. conditioning. I don't care if your heart rate goes up to 140 beats. Like I care about how fast, how quick you're moving weight or med ball or whatever the, the, the movement is, right. right? So an easy marker if you do need something to look at or kind of gauge, am I well rested enough? If you have any type of tracker that tracks your heart rate, it needs to be around resting. So that means it's gonna require you to rest to a point where you almost feel like you might be over resting, but that's what you need to do. Like Nick said, depending on the rep set and the amount of weight, it could be anywhere from two minutes to five minutes to even 10 minutes possibly. It really could be, be. you know, depending on what your intentions are, what your goal is, but you need that rest. This is a time not to rush the workout because your benefit is becoming is coming from that max effort, giving all you can. The less rest you have, you're not going to be able to reach that 95% threshold or 90% threshold you need to be reaching. And again, your hard is each and every rep. It's the intensity that you have behind it versus what we're going to get into now, which is the hypertrophy and muscular endurance range. And everyone loves this because everyone wants to get jacked. They want to look good in the uni. Look good, play good, right? No no peace. Number one on the field, number one in... I'm sorry, I'm a flashback. Sorry. Glory days. (laughs) Shit. I was just about to say this. Uh, No, and then, you know, we get so many questions about like, oh, I just need to get bigger. I need to bulk up. I need to put on 15 pounds, all this stuff, right? So when it comes to muscular hypertrophy, AKA building muscle, Albert, why don't you break it down for him around sets, reps, volume, intensity, and what the, the intention and things they should be looking out for is around this. So, so let, let's be real about hypertrophy muscle growing. You can grow muscle during the strength and power phases if you do them correctly. Eating right. Yes, if you're eating right, that's a big thing. <laughs> Next week, we're gonna talk about that. But uh, 
Yeah, so I mean, but ideally you're doing higher reps because hypertrophy is more a reflection of the volume you're putting on your body. So this means it could be anywhere from eight reps all the way up to 30 reps. You can receive a benefit of growing muscle, right? Now, reps and sets, it varies because again, the focus is volume now. Now, as an athlete though, this goes for both muscle endurance and hypertrophy. They're both focused on the volume. They're not necessarily focused on the neural response when it comes from your CNS. Now, as an athlete, though, okay, one of the things, the biggest, the biggest concerns from a strength coach position and where we're at, where we're developing these athletes is if they're focused so much on muscle growth, they're not going to be improving their strength and they're not going to be improving their power. Two things that actually translate over into athletic performance. Yeah, you're too worried about titty popping. Titty popping. So what happens when you grow muscle? There's more tension in your body now, right? So it's going to hinder the way you move. So if you're not doing anything to translate over that stimulus, especially too, you're going to be gaining weight. So you're not going to jump as high. You're not going to be as fast if you're not training correctly. So it can actually hurt you as an athlete, even though you do need to get bigger. That's the reality of all of us high school athletes. But if you focus is strictly on that muscle growth and there's no consideration of how that translate into movement, you can actually make yourself a worse athlete. It's one of the biggest areas that I think people are unconsciously just not aware of at all is that like, oh, my coach says this, or I need to gain 15 pounds or whatever, blah, blah, blah. And they're doing four sets of 25 or this or that. But if you look at how you're doing those reps, they're slow, methodical, controlled, absolutely everything that is not what you do on a field no. or on a court. Or you need to be explosive, fast, strong, powerful. And not slow and meticulous because that never translates into what we actually do on the field. It's not about time under tension. It's about how fast I can move in space to execute the movement I'm trying to do. Yeah, and the big thing I think what we don't realize is that to build muscle, you can be doing a full spectrum of or a range of movements, intensities, and things to build muscle, right? You can build muscle going for strength yes. you can build muscle doing the standard hypertrophy four sets of eight to 12 right and, then and not can, feel completely exhausted walking away from that workout yeah and you can also build muscle going into up into that muscular endurance range because all your primary goal when it is muscular hypertrophy is to grow the muscle it is not about performance it's about getting bigger right that's, right that's all it is so that's what i want you athletes to understand is that there are ways to build muscle where you can also keep that performance intact and in line with what your goals are, which are to be better on the field. Right. right. So what athletes could even utilize a hypertrophy point of training, maybe at what point, or is there even any benefit for me as an athlete to even do anything? Muscle endurance. Uh, if your sport demands it, right? Let's, we all, Okay, so as an athlete, you got to understand, like, what are the demands of your sport before you just jump into a training program? Yeah. Like you need to be questioning and understanding what you're doing on the field right. or on the track or whatever it ends up being, right? So what Nick is getting at, basically all high school sports outside of endurance athletes, so even soccer, football, basketball, baseball, they even though base or I'm sorry, basketball and soccer you're constantly moving, it's still short sprint spurts when you're making that play. Sure. It's a stop and go. It's not constant. Yes, they're moving constantly, but they're sprinting in instances. Small movement where they're controlled, then boom, go, go, go. All right, their next play. Yeah, for muscular endurance, local muscular endurance, things like that, um, the really the, the top sports I think would use them would be like cross country or long distance track or maybe swimming, right? If you're right. one of the persons that's doing a long swimming type type of deal. And this is lightweight, like 30% of your max, 40% of your max. I mean, it's considerably very light, easy to the person that's executing the performance. Yeah, and the main thing with muscular endurance too, besides having, it's, it's a, a lighter weight for a lot of reps and it's the rest period. You're not a, allowed or supposed to rest a very long time. It's like 45 seconds or under in order to help build some of that muscular endurance. But for most people or most athletes, muscular endurance is not what you want to train no. for. And even from a hypertrophy standpoint, um, the only time that you really want to focus strictly on this is basically out of season. 
because the reason why is that your loads are not going to get too heavy because you're focused on the volume and how many reps and sets you can essentially complete. Again, that blood flow, that pump we talk about, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger and all that stuff. It's all about the pump, right? Now, right out of season, that's a great time because that allows recovery. So if you're doing like a bodybuilder split, for instance, you know, that allows things to recover so you can grow some muscle. But from a long-term standpoint, you don't want to be training like that through off-season and preseason. No, we utilize in our foundational phase some components of bodybuilding, right? 100%. Bodybuilding is great for correcting imbalances, for building work capacity, um, and maybe helping prevent some or building up some lagging muscle groups that maybe haven't been developed, right? So right. There are components of bodybuilding and hypertrophy that are great. But as an athlete, you really need to have a program that transitions you out of that into some strength, some power, and some higher velocity things that are going to prime you to be that best athlete on the field. Right. So one of the illustrations me and Nick kind of played around with yesterday um, that I think is so powerful is that, yes, if you do these types of training, you're going to get better as an athlete because you're so young, you're so underdeveloped, and anything that's not will and it, anything will work at this point. So the question is, do I want to get 20% better or do I want to get 90 to 100% better, yeah. right? And I think all of us want the 90 to 100% better. So that means that like Nick just alluded to, there needs to be adaptions and transitions throughout your training so that you can gain benefits from all styles of training because all have something to offer to an athlete for the most part. You know, if it's pro approached correctly, the intention's correct, the idea of what you're trying to do is in line with what you're going to try to accomplish at the yeah, end. Yeah, I just don't want our athletes to be blinded by what has worked for people who... Uh, like are kind of old school or this worked for them, right? I mean, when we were growing up, like what worked for our parents and right. stuff, like we were like, oh, we got a little bit stronger. We got a little bit this. So like we were hyper-focused on what I was saying is that 20%, we're like, well, this is going to continue to work for me. When in actuality, we lost, we were at a negative 70% of yes. what we could have actually reached in our full potential because we were so focused on that 20%. And we don't want to see that happen for any of you. So no. let's let's just be smart about our training and, and, and make sure that it progresses to what our ultimate goal is. Because I know for a lot of you, like your ultimate goal isn't to just be a bigger athlete, right? It's to be a better athlete on the field. Yes. And to make more plays and to get college scholarships and things like that. Ooh. Yeah. So don't lose focus over that is what we're getting at. Yeah. So for real. Yeah. I mean. I don't know. I don't have anything else to say. I hope this was helpful for all of you guys. I hope you guys understand the difference between strength, power, muscular, uh, like building and hypertrophy and the endurance aspect and around the sets and the reps and things like that and the intention behind and reasoning behind what you're doing. So let me leave you with one thing before we kind of hop off here and give you all the information and stuff. If you want to build muscle, it's right out of season, right? It, the time to focus on strength is about a month out from season, a month and a half. Once you've recovered and you're ready to go, you focus, go max effort on strength, right? You do that for a few months. Now, a few months before season, okay? This is your preseason. That's when you want to transition to power. That means more rest, focused on more of the load and how you're moving that load, okay? You're focused on locomotion, how well you're moving in space and the load you're moving in space because now you're going to translate all that muscle growth, that strength now into performance. Yeah, it's That's, stacking on each other. It's stacking on each other. And then now as we get into season, now we get to more of those sports-specific things and everything. The honest truth is most of you high school athletes, you don't need muscle endurance. You're going to get that through just your training, also to your conditioning. So it's not something you really want to play around with you're not going to receive benefits from okay so just to kind of create some clarity around when to apply these things if you're a football player you're looking to get ready for a season in september now is the time where you're in that strength power phase you're 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 getting your max effort strength you're getting ready to go into that power phase where you can now apply that strength into movement um so that's just a little bit of background for you guys so you guys know to um kind of go with that where to take these things um if you ever have any questions, though, you can reach out to us directly on our Instagram or TikTok, Athlete Academy, yep. um, underscore at the end. You can reach Nick Leiden at? Uh, Nick it's, Leiden. It's at Nick underscore Leiden. Yes. <laughs> For, on my Instagram. And then on TikTok, 
Uh, I always post some content on there revolving around athletes. He's kind of TikTok famous, so if you want to go check him out, you know. What's what's the TikTok name? Uh, it's just Nick Lydon. Nick Lydon. Boom. Perfect. Um, Instagram, you can find me at Coach underscore Squires. Um, our Instagram is on there, Athlete Academy underscore at the end. Um, and yeah. then also to go ahead. Yeah, sorry. I was going to say, if you have like specific questions around your exercises, training, things like that, go to Athlete Academy uh, and send us a message there. Follow us, send us a message because that's where we'll be super hyper-focused uh, around those topics. 